Thank you so much for tuning in to our podcast. We're doing this for our digital media class. Um, we're going to be talking about video games, a very fun subject. I yeah. am your host, Michelle. Um, I basically came out the womb holding a Nintendo 64 controller. Um, I like the PS4 too, or the PS like the PlayStation 2, but um, I will dropkick an Xbox. Um, handing it off to Amari, I have other hosts. Uh, hey, I'm Amari here. I've also been in video games, especially Nintendo, for a very long time. I agree with Michelle on that dropkick and Xbox thing. I'm more of a PlayStation guy myself. I also have a Switch, and I kind of favor Japanese games, RPGs. But, um, yeah, and we also have a PC game. My name's Joe. I was born with the PS2, and my uncle got me an Xbox, and I got a laptop, and I broke it, and now I got a PC. Um, my name is Devin. Devin. Oh, okay. My name is Devin, and um, I grew up with PlayStation, but then I got a PS. No, I got an Xbox for my stepdad. Then I switched over to PS4, and now I'm stuck with PS4. So, yeah. And I'm wanting to build a PC. That's coming. Can't wait about that one. Yeah. So, uh. Our first topic is console wars, especially with the new, uh, recent coming PS5 and Xbox Series X. Mm -hmm. Uh, personally, who, uh, who here thinks that, uh, you're more on the Xbox side or PlayStation side? I'd go with PS4. Yeah, I feel like the PS5, it, it, like, I feel like even though it's, like, the, the digital PS5 is more expensive than the, uh, digital xbox series s it's like i guess the digital ps5 has more of a like bargain and i don't know it feels like it has more like it feels like it's more worth more than money since the series x or s has like weaker specs while the digital ps5 is like the same yeah i agree no 100 percent yep um but still, I do like the new NVIDIA cards, too. They're definitely gonna... Yeah, they're definitely gonna, like, I guess, add a competition. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, um, just to give a little bit of, like, history and perspective for anybody who's listening who doesn't really know what a console war is, um, back in the 80s and 90s, it was mainly between Nintendo and Sega, because Nintendo was kind of rocking the market, with Mario, and they're like, wow, we have, like, a family-friendly fat plumber guy, like, buy our games, and they, like I said, kind of had a monopoly, but then Sega was like, hey, now, we have a hedgehog, and he's, yeah. <laughs> he's fast, yeah, he's fast, and he's edgy, well, not edgy, but he was, like, more sassy, like, especially, like, with Sonic Adventure 1, like, the opening is him, like, jumping out of a plane with a surfboard or whatever, and he's going down the trucks chasing him. Like, we oh love that. Yeah, like, yeah. Sonic was pretty much a full representation of the 90s, and people loved him for that. <laughs> yeah, and then jumping forward a little bit, um, really, so now the console war is mainly between, like, Xbox and, uh, oh my god, PlayStation. <laughs> Xbox and PlayStation, and... I want to say it roughly started when Sega discontinued making their own consoles, and that was when was it? Like, oh my gosh. I think it was 1998. Yeah, so like basically around the 2000s, because that's also when Xbox started making their own consoles, right? Like the first Xbox. Mm. Yeah, like the early 2000s. Yeah, uh, 2001. Yeah, so go ahead and one more slide. I think I put the date. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. So, modern day, what quote unquote team are you on? Um, PC. <laughs> Me? Yeah, I like how. I do have an Xbox, so. I think I'm more of a PlayStation and a PC type of guy. PlayStation has yeah, all I'm the. Yeah, I played PlayStation like, PC. PlayStation was games earlier. Yeah, like they have uh, like, more exclusives that they like, Halo is really good. Like, I really like Halo, but, like... I never um, got to yeah. Halo. I think Black Ops is better than Halo, to me. <laughs> like, Black I feel Ops like... Way yeah, Black Ops is way better. Like, it's not like everyone's just gonna buy an Xbox for Halo, so I feel like with PlayStation, with 
all the mini exclusives it has. I, I think it's yeah, I think it's Black Ops Two is on the Xbox One. It's not on the PS4, so yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. But I feel like, you know, Halo's meant for Xbox and Black Ops meant for PS4. For yeah, me. it was always like that. Call of Duty was like a PS thing, even though they were on both consoles. Yeah. So like, PlayStation yeah. always got new cards like a month early. Yeah, I remember they had that like that exclusive thing with uh, Black Ops 4. I forget what it was, but it was like PS4 had like specific um, deals with it. Yeah, so, that's the one thing I hear about consoles. You have to buy some type of, you know, game pass to actually play online, which is like, I am a broke person. Like, <laughs> I still be playing $10 a month to play online. Exactly. And that's what PC has to offer rather than consoles. It's like, it's that's what everything PC online. Is yeah, exactly. It's, it's, <laughs> but the only thing you buy the game. Price. And you play it. Exactly. It's kind of balanced. What did you say, Michelle? I just want to say it's a little bit balanced because to build a decent PC, you probably need anywhere from like at least $400 plus, you know? Um, I actually build my own PC too. You really don't need that much money for a PC, actually. Uh, My laptop that can barely run like any modern game is like 700 to 800 and you, you can easy. actually build like a 200 300 dollar pc card. and they actually uh, still be playing like good seven. games i think it's like an integrated chip though mm. yeah they really wanted a gtx but no i'll wait till college for that they can show the fans aren't blocked or something yeah i can make sure that yeah yeah. Problem I have with my laptop. <laughs> I gotta check the fans. I'll probably not screw it. But um, what's the next segment? So um, we definitely want to talk about the newest consoles coming out because like Nintendo's already released their Switch. They've got nothing new going on, <laughs> but Xbox and PlayStation, they have these. Which obviously this is not the exact console, but like this is what they look like. They look stupid <laughs> and fun. <laughs> like fun. Retarded. Yeah. Yeah, you know how much I love uh, my fridge. <laughs> my fridge. What if they actually make that into like a cooler? You know, you can put something in. I'm it's pretty sure game. somebody will. We love a hybrid. Yes. I believe on our next side we have the actual photos though, and like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like the look of them. They're just. I like the look of the cool. PS5 on its side. Like True, is like futuristic, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, give them that white and black vibe. Yeah, you know, it's got like, yeah. Really the like sleekness. The controller looks cool. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, the PlayStation controller it looks like amazing. The Xbox One just looks the same. Exactly. <laughs> People are literally dissing the PS5 controller, even though it's like one of the coolest looking controllers out. I like it, I like the controller. Yeah, the controller's really nice. They took the Xbox One and just made, made it flat. It go upwards. <laughs> Exactly. Honestly, the Xbox. Wait, but why uh, is the Xbox the same controller like every single like, generation? It's the same exact controller. Yeah, it's like because I think honestly that's kind of the you first know. Xbox One controller didn't have Bluetooth. So yeah, that's true. It was like a Duke, I think it was called. Um, there's one thing about the. Uh, I feel like the Xbox One controller looks better than the Series X controller, personally. It's more thin. And it's got like a better design. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like yeah. the cross thing at the yeah. bottom. Yeah, me too. Oh, yes, graphics. That, I really love graphics, a good graphics. Yes. I really want to talk about more the combat graphics because that is gameplay. I love that. That's like <laughs> yeah. the storyline to that is amazing, like impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> but the graphics to it, it has to, like when they first originally um started it. Uh, I can't talk. When they first started it, the graphics was just like pixels. Like, what's going on? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, no, definitely. So, um, just yeah. so like the viewers know what they're seeing, um, top left is Ma- obviously the original Mario. That was like what late '80s. And that's 8-bit graphics, right? 
Um, like we have the five. bottom, Sonic 2, 16. Top is Doom. I have no idea. I think it's 64 <laughs> bit, right? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts. I believe that was like 2000s-ish, so it wasn't like bad looking, but it was definitely still like... It's not Assassin's Creed Odyssey, basically, which is top right modern gaming. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, 4K? Like, 1080p? Yeah, it looks like something from the Bible. Yeah, it looks like a painting. That's all good. <laughs> well, okay, it was... It was in ancient Greece, so like they, of course, they kind of looked like old and bible <laughs> Of course, of course. Uh, oh. Yeah, so here was like a direct comparison just to show like exactly the advancements in graphics. Um, I put the dates and stuff, but that's that's not even a huge time jump. What is that, like five years? Six years, years yeah. <clears throat> Six years can go far. Yeah. I mean, and that was that was my point. I forgot was that that top one is from um, their console in the '90s, obviously, and then the bottom one was our next console. So we went from those blocks to like that pretty smooth graphic, graphicking, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Right here. Textures are better. Oh, and uh, this is oh. from. Final Fantasy 7, um, yeah, this is like a really 20... Yeah, like, advanced. <laughs> yes, like, this is crazy. So, the one on the right is from 1997, and this was a cutscene, which means this was, like, the best-looking game of the time. And this was in 1997, and I think the game after this, which came out in, like, 1999, already had better graphics than this, but, like, the jump from this, which is just, like, a anime-looking character with, like, it's, like, Super graphic-y and like you can't really it's like super blocky and then you get to the left oh. side, which is a completely real person and Now that crazy. to me that's the difference between animation to anime, you know, yeah, like, like the one on the right that's animation but the one on the left that's anime, you know, like, yeah, like I guess you could say that because like the one on the right has more of an art style while the one on the left just looks more realistic mm -hmm. Yeah, but like the thing about this is that the one on the right, it's a cutscene, while the one on the left is literally gameplay, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, so if you don't know, um, for the non-gamers listening, um, cutscenes <laughs> during games are usually pre-loaded, and they're made to be, um, like, more aesthetically pleasing. They have, like, the best models, because when you're in the game, um, obviously the system has to load all the assets, you know, like, the, the menus that pop up for the player, um, animations. So when it's in the cutscene, it's really just playing a movie instead of going through all the steps of like, you know, what the player chooses, how the animation plays after that. Um, if that makes sense, I don't think I'm explaining it totally amazingly, but it's kind of just like a story mode. It's like a story mode just basically has like cutscenes. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, they're the best looking, basically. The PC gaming. The best gaming oh. to today. Yeah. <laughs> So I take it away. So what's up with PCs? Well, comparing them to consoles, they are really like ten times better. Uh, yeah. I mean, for my laptop, which is you know just a laptop, like I can run a game that's also on PS4 that I didn't even know I could run, and it's like insane. Yeah, because the consoles like struggle to hold sixty True. FPS on games. Even though yeah. it's supposed to, but they just so run it dirty. <laughs> and on PC, you could have like over three hundred. Like, damn. So what you're saying is that a PC basically loads faster and keeps a more consistent frame rate. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm one of those like boomers. You know when boomers are like, I don't need a phone, I have the newspaper. Like that's me with video game consoles, because like I, I like PC gaming. I really do. Um I have my I have a Steam because I'm, I'm so cool. Everybody has Steam. But like yes. I don't know, part of it is I have a com like a uh, potato computer. I do want to get a PC, but like my computer cannot run anything. Like Minecraft, it struggles. I'm like, dude, this is like the most basic game ever. Yeah, like okay, it's weird because like my computer can run like games that are like super high graphic and all that but it can't like it struggles in minecraft which is like insane i think it's because of stabilization but 
Maybe try maybe to like, get settings or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna definitely try that because it's a little crazy. Probably get the Windows version. Um, I guess your next step is mobile games. So, Ew. <laughs> we yeah, love 50, mobile 50 games. On this. Yeah, I'm fifty really fifty. Like Okay. This thing, oh. when I'm bored, you know, I'm not next to a PS4, I might play mobile games. It's like a last yeah. option. Okay, yeah, I agree. Okay, so I used to really <laughs> hate mobile games. I just, I still don't really feel 100% on mobile games because they just feel so, like, cheap and, like, they just, they don't really have that much depth to them. But, like, lately, like, I've seen more developers trying to make, like, mobile games that, like, are console type level. And like yeah. they, they look yeah like, more, yeah, like PUBG, and then there's that like that Raid Shadow Legends that's on every ad ever. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, like they look better and like they have better controls and all that. And I feel like if companies try to actually think as mobile games as like games, since our phones aren't like as weak as they used to be, I feel like they can improve. But still, I don't think they're ever gonna like surpass any any console or uh, PC games. Uh, totally. Yeah. So, um, go ahead and slide one more slide over. Um, as much as I do not like mobile games, I cannot deny their success. Oh. Um, these are just a few games within, you know, ever since probably like the first iPhones came out and could support a mobile game, we've had games like this. And obviously there have been a ton of people that download it and like it. I mean, every mom has Candy Crush on her phone. It's basically pre-installed with Facebook. Um... <laughs> I don't know. I, it's not like if you tell me, if you walk up to me and go, I'm a gamer, I play, you know, Temple Run. I'm like, okay. Please well, move. Do you have anything get, else? Get and they're like, no. It's like, you're not a gamer. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm gatekeeping. I simply am gatekeeping. <laughs> yeah. I always think about how Mario Kart Tour was like the biggest game ever and it just like quickly died. Like yeah. a month after it was released. But I guess it yeah. was cool that everyone had like something that could play it which was that was pretty nice i have a question why did they take fortnite out of the you know out iphones i mean apple store like what was um, up with that i think it was a leave gold battle because fortnite <laughs> made their own uh shop where they could have their own money which means they could like surpass like bypass trying to give apple money and Apple didn't like it. They weren't getting money, so they just took them off the app store. We love money. It was pretty weird, and I think they still have beef, but like, I think it was just really greed that made them uh, delete it. Yeah. like money. So, coming up to the end, we're going to talk about the success of gaming. And, forgive me, I kind of made this more of a presentation than a podcast in this section, but go ahead and slide to the next slide for me real quick. Um, because a lot of boomers are like, oh, hey, gaming, like, rots your brain. And, like, it probably does. But there was a study where people, let me, let me double check this. So, yeah, there were people that played, like, Mario, Mar Super Mario 64 for, like, you know, six, peer uh, six months. Um, and then somebody who took, like, a computer piano class. And then finally, nobody took anything and they had to um take this test about their short-term memory and as you can see in this uh graph down here the con is the control group who did nothing the mus is the music group who did the piano lessons and the vid is the video games and you can see um how the scores go up more like it doesn't matter what their beginning score was it matters how they grew and the people who played mario grew the most so i thought that was very interesting <laughs> Yeah, feel. Well, I kind of you know when Grandpa says games suck. <laughs> so, I can like, kind of yeah. see with like you know their like, um memories because like I play like a lot of fighting games, so you have to like remember the controls. It's like yeah. since you like remember the controls, like if you like play something or do something for very like a good amount of time, you are gonna get used to it. So it's like, is it actually running your brain, or am I like getting good at it? Yeah, no, I totally know what you're saying. They have to memorize combos and stuff, and, like, there is strategy involved. And, like, I'm not trying to say that video games are going to make you super cool and super smart. Like, obviously, you need school as well, blah, blah, blah. But, like, the point is, they aren't totally melting your brain, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
All right, and let me finish up right here. So, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joe. I'll finish. Oh, sorry. Um, but uh, I really I couldn't find this quote. But there was somebody who said I'm not too sure how respected he was. But there was a quote flying around where he was saying, "The future of storytelling is not in movies. It's in video games." And I found some data to kind of back that up. Um, according to Polygon, the you know the money made from video games was going to be like $83 billion in 2014. And in that exact same year, movies and films only made $36 billion, according to the MPAA. I and mean, I have um, a graph. And it's like, <laughs> wow. I'm just thinking about, like, this year. Like, think about how we can't really go to movie theaters, so, like, a lot of movies are, like, yeah. suffering box office. But, like, I think about video game successes like Animal Crossing and how it came out this year. And, like, it was literally one of the highest-selling games of all, like, time for Nintendo. And, like, yeah. I think it's, like, so much easier for people to, first of all, buy games and just spend time with them rather than, like, seeing a movie. And I think this year specifically really shows it from the pandemic. Like, video games just, like, have more to offer. You can put, like, a lot more time into them. They, like, overall, they're worth, like, yeah. a lot more. Totally. So, actually, kind of jumping off that point... Um, I was at my friend's house yesterday, and we were playing um, a murder game, and it's not exactly like a, what's the word? Like, you know games like Detroit Become Human, where it's super, like, movie-esque, and you just kind of make minimal choices? What the yeah. No. Yeah, so, um, we were playing, like, a murder game, and we were super invested in, like, discovering things and walking around and figuring out, like, where the blood is and like, <laughs> what the weapon was, and we were sitting there talking with each other, like, figuring it out. And then we had to go to a trial and we had to figure that out and pull up evidence. And I think that's a much more meaningful experience than going to a movie. Because, like, me and that same friend went to go see the Sonic movie. And yeah, that was cool. But I feel like <laughs> this sounds so stupid. But I feel like we bonded more playing this video game. And I think that if that's our future, like, with storytelling and, like, interacting with, like, our family and our friends through that, I feel like that's so much more um, impactful than just going to see a movie together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and I kind of like, okay, y'all know like the anime show Sword Art Online? You know how yeah. they... Okay. Oh, VR gaming, yeah. Yes, VR gaming. That yeah. stuff, I never tried it, but like, I really want to do it, G. I'm definitely going to like... get the uh, new Oculus uh, Quest that just is about to come out, because it's only going to be like two ninety nine, and mm -hmm. I am super excited for it. I've never tried VR gaming, but I know it's, like, if it goes far enough as the uh, anime if you don't know it's like yeah. you're transported into a world that's full of, it's just like you're transported into a video game world exactly so. which like you live in i like those type of games because like i can like do whatever i want kind of but like it's still fun like, i want that game exactly and i feel like if whenever video <laughs> games get to that point that'll be like showing how far we've come and yeah that futuristic stuff yep that's definitely what you're saying yeah because like um, some of the first few games were like Pong and stuff, and we go a little bit forward, and like Mario was so cool. It's like, whoa, you're going through levels and like jumping on turtles, crazy, and that's a linear game. And you look at today, and you can play open world games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and you can, you know, walk wherever you want, you can climb up buildings, you can jump, up, like, you can just do whatever you please. You can kill a chicken if you want, you know, but with things like Mario back in the day, like, you had a goal, and you couldn't do anything but go through the level, get to the goal. And I think that's yeah. also another um, great example of how much video games have progressed. Yes, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so is that a wrap? I think we... Uh, yeah, I think we have been filming for about 22 minutes, I believe. So... <laughs> we yeah. love that. Great. That was great. That was lit. Awesome.